Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear students this is a video for the subject of education for the course of bachelor's in education and for the paper of educational technology part 2 this video lecture is going to cover a topic related to communication and interaction and the lecture will be based on using the Flanders interaction analysis technique in the classroom setup. This video lecture is recorded by Dr. Iram Khan. The course coordinator and the presenter of this video is Dr. Iram Khan from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. The academic expert or the reviewer of this video is Professor Jesse Abraham from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. This video is produced under the project DTH Swayam Prabha Channels of Ministry of Education, Government of India. Hello, my dear students. I am Dr. Aram Khan, Assistant Professor at Institute of Advanced Studies in Education, Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Today, we will be discussing a topic related to communication and interaction. And the topic is going to base on using the Flanders interaction analysis technique. Let us start the discussion first with the objectives. The objectives of this session are to discuss the interaction analysis category system given by Ned A. Flanders and to elaborate the steps of Flanders system of interaction analysis in classroom scenario. So the Flanders interaction analysis category system is something which is known for giving an overview of the relationship of a teacher with the student inside the classroom. The system is an observational tool used to classify the verbal behavior of teachers and students as they interact in the classroom. Flanders instrument was designed for observing only the verbal communication in the classroom and it is not going to give any kind of uh, uh, cue on non-verbal gestures. They are not taken into account. Basically, uh, it is having an assumption that the system, uh, when it goes on observing the uh, verbal statements of the teacher inside the classroom, these statements are consistent with the non-verbal gestures of uh, the teacher or we can say that the total behavior of the teacher can be analyzed. So, so this is something which is also considered by few people as the limitation of this system. But basically it assumes that once we are checking the verbal uh, communication of a teacher with the student, basically all those non-verbal gestures automatically are covered. So Ned Flender has categorized the instruction of teachers and pupils in the classroom in several categories. Basically, he categorized the 10 different categories of the behavior or you can say the instructions or the communication happening inside the classroom for the students and the teachers. Let us see what are these categories are all. So, the Flanders uh, categories or we can say that the interaction analysis uh, technique given by Flender has got 10 different categories. What are these categories? First of all, what he did, he actually divided the entire communication of the student and the teacher into three broad categories. The first one is the teacher talk. The second one is the pupil talk. And then the third one is silence or confusion. So again, what he did, he divided these three major categories into 10 different categories. So what happens like the first seven categories uh, from the 10 come under the teacher talk. And under, under this uh, uh, teacher talk, the first four out of those seven, the first four come under the, uh, the uh, basically indirect response or the indirect communication kind of thing. So what are those four? The first one is the accept feeling. 
what is accept feeling when the teacher accepts and clarifies an attitude or the feeling tone of a pupil or a student in a non threatening manner this feeling can be a positive feeling or a negative feeling then the second one is praises or encourages what happens here praises or encourages the student action or behavior basically it happens to uh, to make a kind of uh, uh, light atmosphere so jokes that release tension but not at the expense of another individual this is something which uh, is something which teacher takes care of here the teacher may be nod the head or he or she can also say hmm so these type of uh, gestures you can see that those uh, non verbal gestures are also coming here with although we are taking care of analyzing the verbal gestures then the next one or the third category is accepts or uses ideas of the students or the pupils what he or she does or the teacher does clarifying or building or developing the ideas suggested by a student so teacher basically extensions of pupil ideas these are all included like when the teacher takes the idea given by the student and then he or she includes it and also brings other ideas own ideas the teacher takes the idea of the student and puts in some more ideas of the teacher and then in this way the acceptance of the ideas of the student is actually shown by the teacher then number 4 the number 4 category is ask questions here the teacher asks the question about the content or the procedure with the intention that the student may answer so it is like something when the teacher is not knowing that the answer may come but the there is somehow um, a thought that maybe the student can answer so asking question is done this is the fourth category the fifth category is coming under the direct interaction where uh, we can say that now the responses the teacher's responses are over now the initiation process or the direct response has started from here the fifth category which is uh, coming under this particular section is lecturing what exactly he, uh, happens here in this uh, category giving facts or options about the content or the procedures expressing the ideas of uh, the teacher expresses the ideas and uh, also the teacher asks many questions many related questions which are uh, very much related to that particular content then the next category or the sixth category is giving direction what exactly happens here here the teacher gives directions commands or orders to which a student is expected to comply so the student will be answering or giving the uh, the response here on the direct directions or once the uh, teacher will start giving the directions the stu student is going to uh, or expected to comply the directions then the seventh category is criticizing or justifying authority here the statements intended to change the student behavior from non acceptable to acceptable or you can say that we can find a kind of pattern in the behavior of a student as a teacher we all are able to find this pattern so what we try to do we try to bring the student from this non acceptable behavior to the acceptable behavior and this is what uh, this teacher actually intends and this teacher is likely to do uh, this is something which is desired from the teacher so this is the seventh category criticizing or justifying the authority these are the seven categories which are covered under the first major category of teacher talk 
now comes the uh, second major category which is pupil talk we can also say that it's a student talk section and here uh, this is again uh, we can say that uh, having the, the, this particular section is having two subsections or two categories and the first category which is here uh, in this particular table you can see that it is at the eighth place this is related to response and this category is pupil talk in response to teacher what exactly it says that the conversation or the talk by the students in response to the teacher teacher what happens the teacher initiates the content or the contact process the conversation and the student actually carries on the student gives the response or the student passes on the statements which are in response with the uh, those interactive uh, statements which the teacher has given so the student gives the response and this is coming here under the eighth category the ninth category which comes under the section of pupil talk and which is related to initiation basically this category is named as pupil talk initiated by the pupil what exactly happens here this is the talk which is basically done by the student which is initiated by the student student is basically indicating who may talk next so here what is uh, expected from the observer because here the, you know, like once we start doing this uh, this particular flanders analysis we will see that a lot of things are to be observed so this is something where the observer is supposed to see that when the student is initiating the talk when the student is starting some sort of uh, point whether the student who is initiating a talk and who is asking the other student to say something that student the next student is willing to talk or not so if it is happening then we can say that the category is covered so this is the ninth uh, category which is called as pupil talk initiated by the pupil now let us come to the third major, major category and also to the 10th and last category of the analysis or this initial like uh, interaction analysis which we are talking about this third major category is known as silence or the state of confusion and here the 10th point is covered under this and there is only one point inside this major category silence or confusion what happens when the teacher is teaching there are short periods of confusion in which communication cannot be understood by the observer there are pauses so there are pauses we can see that not even the student or the teacher nobody is speaking up and there is a silence and this state why the silence uh, is at present um, he, like uh, why the silence is there the observer is not in a position to make out that what is the reason of this silence so it is the state of confusion when we are not as a observer we are not in a position to uh, to make out the meaning of the silence so this is the 10th and last category which comes under the third major category of silence or confusion after understanding about the categories let us start the process of uh, this interaction analysis technique given by flanders so what happens the first thing which we do here in this technique is the observation procedure observation so here what happens the observer sits in the classroom in the best position to hear and see the participant and normally uh, the observer sits at the back at some place where the things are visible if we uh, go and sit in uh, somewhere in the middle then maybe we will not be in a position to observe the students who are coming at the back so it's it's always better to sit in the position 
uh, which is at the back and everything is visible from that particular position. So at the end of each three second period, this observer decides the category that best represents the communication of events we have just observed inside the classroom. So we have seen that all those categories, uh, the, those 10 categories. So this, the observer will decide that every three seconds, what exactly is happening inside the classroom, it lies under which category. And then this observer writes down the category number while simultaneously assessing the communication in the next period of the, those three seconds. So in this way, the uh, continuation of giving the uh, the markings or uh, in whatever way the uh, the observer is making the uh, markings that goes on and uh, this particular rate uh, of making the observations normally is 20 to 25 observations per minute because every three seconds uh, the observation is to be noted down now once we start doing this interaction analysis, uh, because it is given by Flender, so he has also set some ground rules, which are to be followed while noting down the observations. And these ground rules are something which we have to follow so that we can make the good kind of interaction analysis. What are these? The first one is that when we are uncertain about placing a statement on one of any two categories, choose a category on the scale that is farthest from the category 5 with the exception of category 10. So if we have to choose among 3 and 4, we will, go, we will choose number 3. If we have to choose among 6 and 7, then we will choose 7. Then number 2, the number 2 guiding principle is that uh, the or uh, the ground rule is that if the teacher's behavior is either consistently direct or indirect, avoid shifting from one classification to the other unless such a shift is clearly indicated by the teacher. The next ground rule is when the teacher repeats student's answer and if it is a correct answer, this is to be recorded as a 2 or it will come under the category of 2. Then number 4 uh, ground rule is that record an 8 when several students respond on a narrow question or maybe all the questions uh, like all the students basically respond on a question with along with like uh, they, they uh, uh, like combinedly answer a question in kind of chorus. So this is to be uh, recorded in the category 8. So after making the observations, we have to record the observations on the coding chart. So let us consider an, uh, a class where uh, there, are, there is a class happening, the communication is happening and let us try to analyze it into various categories. And we all know that there are 10 categories. So by indicating the relevant code numbers, the observer writes the proper category numbers in its correct sequence. And we have uh, understood that every three seconds you have to take the observation. You have to actually mark that which particular activity is happening. The activity which is happening inside the classroom, it lies under which particular category given by Flanders. So according to that, we have to mark it on a piece of paper or maybe in a table. You can make an observation table while going to the classroom. And here you can see that uh, there is one observation table which is made. So we can see that every three seconds, the marking of or identification of that what is happening and then uh, the the particular case is written so 10 means 10th category there is silence or confusion second means the second category third means the third category and in this way the entire category is basically 
mentioned or noted down and after that what we do we made the pair how the pair is made simply what we do the first two readings 10 and 2 are the first two readings so they are paired then the next two and three and we have to see that 10 and 2 and then after the, uh, 10 and 2 the second category or the second pair is going to take the two also so the two is repeated the two is repeated so two and three the next will be three and two the next will be two and one so in this way the second number is repeated and it becomes the first number of the another pair so in this way we can make the entire pairing the next is the tabulating matrix the data which we have just observed and we have recorded are now recorded in a 10 into 10 matrix. The first step is to take uh, all these entries series wise and we have to mark it here in the table. And what exactly we have to do? We, while marking the observations, each pair overlaps with the next and the total number of observations. And whatever we have recorded just now, we have got 10 and 2, then 2 and 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, 5, and many more observations. And you, you can see that here, every second, like 10 and 2, then 2 is overlapped in the next one, and it becomes 2 and 3. Then 3 is overlapped, and it becomes 3 and 2. In this way, the entire observation uh, pairs are made. And then... The numbers are tallied in the matrix one pair at a time. And what happens? The row is used for the first number in the pair and the column is used for the second number basically here in this uh, matrix table. So the row is used for the first number in pair and the column is used for the second number. And you can see the tallies here made in this table. The first uh, data is 10 and 2. So here the 10th row and second column we will make one tally mark. Then the second data is 2 and 3. So we will go for the second row and the third column. In the same way we will go on and make the tallies for all those data which we have just got recorded. Then the next section is the interpretation of the matrix. What we will be doing now, we will be making several in inferences or we will be making the interpretation of this matrix which we have just created. The first interpretation section or the uh, way in which we are going to interpret is the proportion of teacher talk. We are going to calculate the proportion of teacher talk, talk pupil talk and silence or confusion like the three categories we will be taking up that what are the proportions in which we have actually made the uh, the entire uh, conversation happen so the proportion of tallies in the columns two three four five six and seven and then um, all the other columns eight nine and ten to the total tallies uh, basically indicate that how much the teacher talks so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, these were under the category of teacher talk, 8, 9 were in the categories of people talk and the 10th one was in the category of silence or confusion. So we will be checking that how many tally marks we have got here in this particular matrix for those particular sections. So after several years of making observations, we can anticipate an average of 68% teacher talk, 20% of pupil talk, and 11 or 12% silence or uh, the state of confusion in the Indian scenario. Like this is, a, this is something which was uh, calculated by researchers and it was found that in the Indian scenario, uh, the normal average or normal proportion of a classroom uh, teacher talk uh, is 68 percent and pupil talk is 20 percent and the silence or state of confusion is for 11 or 12 percent and uh, if we want to see that how this can be calculated 
we can just make a kind of addition of all the seven first seven categories it will give us the number and then we can even go for calculating the student talk and the silence or the state of confusion we can just make the additions of the numbers uh, or the tally marks and we can make out this particular proportion the next interpretation is in terms of the ratio between indirect influence and the direct influence. The sum of the columns one, two, three, and four. We have we have just uh, understood that the first four among those seven were in the category of indirect influence, and the uh, next uh, five, six, and seven. They were among the teacher talk. Uh, five, six, and seven, seven were in the category of direct uh, uh, influence of the teacher. So, what is the ratio? We have to make an interpretation of it. So, if the ratio is one or more than one, the teacher is said to be indirect in his or her behavior. And the ratio therefore shows whether a teacher is more direct or indirect in his or her teaching. So, it should, if, if it is one or more than one, the teacher is uh, said to be indirect in the behavior. And if it is uh, uh, like less than one, then the teacher will be uh, said to be direct in his or her behavior. Now, the next interpretation category is the ratio between positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. And here, the sum of the columns. 1, 2, 3 are divided by the sum of columns 6 and 7. You have to understand this. What we have to do? We have to make an addition of the tallies of column number 1, 2 and 3. And then we have to divide it by the sum of column 6 and 7. If the ratio is more than 1, then the teacher is said to be a good teacher. Okay. So this is so, uh, the formula in which we can make out the ratio between positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. So the next uh, criteria or the next uh, interpretation point is students participation ratio. How it is calculated? The sum of the column number 8 and the column number 9 is to be divided by the total sum and the answer whatever we will get will reveal how much the student has participated in the teaching learning process so this is the uh, the method through which we can make out the students participation ratio so the next interpretation criteria is to observe the steady state cells in this uh, matrix or the tabulation matrix. You can see here in this uh, particular matrix, the steady state cells along the diagonal from the upper left to the lower right. If these cells are heavily loaded, like if there are a lot of markings, tally markings, it shows that the teacher remains in a particular category for more than three seconds. And the cell with the highest frequency of the entire matrix is typically the cell 55, five, like typically the 55 five cell. Here you can see that which is at the center means row number 5 and column number 5 cell, which lies on this diagonal, like basically this diagonal indicating that the teacher frequently stays longer than 3 seconds when this teacher provides information through lecture. So this is considered to be the steady state cells. Next is the content cross cells. And you can find the content cross cell mentioned here on the screen. The cells corresponding to the numbers 4 and 5 in the column and the row means column number 4 and row number 4 that cell which is marked and then the fifth number row and the fifth number column that cell which is actually centered 
these are known as content cross cells and if these cells are overloaded they reflect that the teacher makes a lot of emphasis on the subject matter he or she stays for more than 3 seconds and many a times it was seen that the teacher stays more than 3 uh, seconds on these uh, uh, particular uh, places on uh, when the uh, when the markings were done on these two of the points so the subject matter was much more emphasized by the teacher then the next is the constructive integration cells and the vicious cells what are these two areas that are most sensitive to the positive and negative aspects of social skills is the teacher student relationship and this can be shown or this can be make out by this particular uh, criteria by this particular uh, interpretation here you can see on screen that there is a section which is marked and is uh, set to be a and then there is next next section which is set to be b area a might be called the constructive integrative cells what is that constructive integrative cells while area b is called the vicious cells the cells corresponding to numbers 1 2 and 3 are known as constructive integration cells and cells of number 6 and 7 are known as the vicious cells these cells reveal the teacher's attention to problems of classroom management and control as a distinctive feature from concern with the subject matter so how the teacher is managing the class along with the control on the subject matter this can be revealed by checking this uh, tabulation matrix if the area which is highlighted and considered to be a if that is heavily loaded then you can see the constructive integration cells are heavily loaded so we can find that the teacher is um, like uh, the attention to the problems of classroom management is something which is uh, being faced by the teacher and if the b area which is corresponding to 6 and 7 row and column if that is heavily loaded then we can find that there are uh, concerns uh, the teacher is very much concerned with the subject matter so we have seen that how we can use this particular flanders interaction analysis technique in the classroom and we can make out the behavior of a teacher and also the behavior of the child so this is somehow a very good technique to uh, to see that what exactly is the relationship of the teacher and the student and what kind of teacher this particular individual is and what are the students uh, behavior so this is a good technique so flender system of interaction analysis is known as the most popular technique which is used for the analysis of the teacher behavior although this uh, checks only the verbal behavior and the um, the interaction which is going on in the classroom as a particular teaching learning um, situation actually makes him so this particular category uh, or the a, the analysis tries to categorize all the sets of possible behaviors while interacting with the students and here the interactions happen in 10 categories and which are divided uh, into the uh, sections which are three major sections basically so what are these the first major section is the teacher talk then we have got the student talk or the pupil talk and then the third major section is the silence or conclusion and uh, there are a lot of uh, applications we have seen uh, that what are those 10 uh, sections or 10 categories which come under the three major categories and we have also seen that how to make 
the observation, how to record the observation. Then uh, after making the record of uh, all the observation, what exactly is to be done for making the tabulation uh, matrix. And then once the tabulation matrix is all made, then we have to make the interpretation. And these interpretations are based on the pointers, which actually tell us the, cap uh, the capabilities, the qualities, or the uh, behavior of that particular teacher to whom we are making an observation, and also uh, of the students. So the application and utilization of uh, Flanders interaction analysis, it mainly involves three major steps. The first one, what exactly we have seen, observation and recording of the classroom events. Then what we did, construction of the interaction matrix. And after this, we did the interpretation of the interaction matrix. And then we make out um, the, the different interpretation pointers. And we can uh, actually give a conclusion about the teacher's uh, way of making interaction inside the classroom. So this was all about today. Uh, this is the list of those references and the suggested further links which were used for creating the lecture. You can also go ahead and read more. And we will meet each other with uh, something else and on a new topic uh, after some time. For today, thank you so much. Goodbye. Dear students, you were watching a video on communication and interaction. And in this lecture, we covered the process of using Flanders interaction analysis technique inside the classrooms. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the homebound situation of COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, Kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.